what's up guys today i'm gonna try putting together all the footage that i have from this water monitor cage build yeah i know it's been a long time it's been about six months he's been in there already um i planned on doing this i planned on doing this video a while back but never got to it um so a lot of stuff is missing out but i'll try to do a little voiceover and let you guys know the details of the build um you can use this build with many other lizards too so um, I made it the easier route because, you know, I'm on a wheelchair. It took me a little while to, to build this cage. Um, you know, I'm missing a leg and my amputee, so it wasn't hard for a lot of you. It might be a lot easier to build this. So just think about that. If I'm in a wheelchair and I can do this, you guys can do it too. All right. So yeah, any just recommendations of lizards you can put here? Iguanas, you know, bigger snakes you could even do this for. Um, water monitors, of course, right as they grow, because, you know, they grow to massive animals that need bigger enclosures. So as he gets bigger he's probably gonna need a bigger enclosure in the future well i hope you guys enjoy this video so the first thing i did guys was build two frames out of this and uh, i made sure they're all squared everything was squared um so this is gonna be the top and bottom only and i built up from here guys One thing I do recommend when building an enclosure, especially if this is your first time actually kind of building something, is to get deck screws with star heads on them. It'll make it easy for your impact or else anything that you're using to drive them in. Yeah, a few main tools that I recommend when building this is a square and a drill of any kind doesn't need to be impact. And another additional tool I used was my miter saw and I also used a table saw during this project but this is not needed because you can go to your local hardware store and get everything cut to size. So now that we got it standing up, we got the legs put together, 
Uh, this cage is four feet tall, so yeah, this is a little high for some people. Um, but yeah, right here you can tell there's a little gap. That was because it was for a purpose. To, uh, I just lifted the frame up and screwed it in place just so I could screw the other side to level. It made it easy for me to screw it in just because my disability, but it's not needed to do it like that way. So the next step, what I did was double the 2x4s to build stronger legs so that way um, I could put, add stuff on top of this cage, which I did. I ended up adding the aquarium. Um, it does hold the aquarium very well. And I also did add the plywood, you can tell on the bottom. But the way I did it was more simple for me. Um, if you wanted to make it look a lot nicer, you would put the plywood within the cage, but you would have to notch out all those leg areas. And right here is me guys, I was able to fit inside the cage. Now the fun part started with adding the siding with plywood and I later added the top with plywood. It started to look more and more like a cage now. So now I started to seal the cage with dry lock. That helps me waterproof the cage. With having a water monitor, you wanna make sure it's as waterproof as possible. And dry lock work, works the best for this. So this is the outcome of the dry lock guys. It comes out to be very gray. If you're not liking the gray, I think there is another choice of color. But yeah, um, I was really happy with the outcome of this guys. And it does work very well to wipe down at times, depending on what it gets stained with. Another important step that I took right here was sealed all cracks and crevices with silicone to waterproof it. You don't want any type of water, especially having a water monitor, to leak out. Um, I also added on a pond liner on top of this to make sure it was super waterproof and no water was able to leak out. Another addition I did do guys was add polyurethane throughout the outside of the cage to really waterproof everything so that the wood will last for a long time.
Right here is the finished product, guys. I'll show you inside a little bit. Right now, the monitor is sleeping. So I do gotta out of the lock here. I unlocked it, of course. I do have to spray these tracks every so often because I have to lubricate them. Oh yeah, he did some mulch on the bottom a little bit. He messes it up, he digs around. I'll change it out. You can't really decorate too nice because they'll tear it up. Right here. I changed this out a few times, so I had something else for him to come up. I It's a ladder just from, to come up from the, the water. And I got some driftwood inside. You can tell it's a little clear down there. You know, get bark and all kinds of stuff in there, and the filter tends to slow down. So I always gotta change that filter. So yeah, this is a 50 gallon tote. I have a little filter on there. I got a pipe that goes outside so I could drain it easily. Got the UV lights up here and then the basking. So yeah, you can see climbs up here and bask a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty nice, guys. Not much to it. The main thing you have to have within a water monitor cage is the water. If you're holding any other lizard, you don't need the water so you can have more room for branches and other stuff. So, yeah, simple setup. Hopefully, I get enough footage for you guys. Well, thank you. Right here is his enclosure. What are you doing? What's up, dude? What are you doing? Brana Salvatore. What are you doing? You gotta stay in your closer, dude. We'll play later. Oh, he wants to come out and play. 